What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to another F1 video for today, man. We have some pretty, pretty important news to share with you guys. My name is Chaz. But oh, in all serious, man, first and first, hope you guys are, hopefully you guys are doing very, very good. Amazing on this lovely Tuesday. Sorry about yesterday. It was like Memorial Day, so like I was kind of out and about, you know, stuff like that. So my apologies. But uh, obviously this past weekend, we have Monaco. And shout out the chain bear. So, so we are going to see how can you make it fun? Like outside the rain, like I told you guys, you know, doing doing the live stream, during you know post match thoughts, like it, you know, it's it's typical Monaco outside of the rain. When it was raining, it was pretty fun. Outside of that, you know, it was eh. But um, first thing first, I think I I just repeat myself. I think on that note. Let's go and get started. Oh, I did see the Indy 500. I didn't watch, but I saw like the highlights like Sports Center. Pretty, pretty crazy ending. I think Marcus Erickson, I think, uh, kind of lost the lead at the end. But um, yeah, they see the highlights. So if you guys did watch it, let, let me know your guys' thoughts now. I know it was probably one of the biggest racing events of the uh, year. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and let's hop straight into it. Don't get to like the video as always. Sub as well if you are new to channel. Make sure you guys do sub to the channel support and uh let's start oh, oh my bad also my fan my fan is in the background so uh have it hot it's, you know, it's, it's like eight degrees outside so you know what i mean the heat the house is hot stuff like that but yes yeah, just want just to just to let you guys know i'm gonna let you guys know monaco monaco what are they feeding you monaco monaco it's not your fault or is it? You see, not only does Formula One keep coming to Monaco in every year that we don't have a global pandemic, but it uses terms like jewel in the crown and a highlight of the year to describe the Monaco event. But it's not really. And yet, it's not, is it? No. It's a bit rubbish and kind of boring. So what can we do about it? I'm here. I'm praying the Spanish GP this weekend is freaking just good, man. Like, it's going overtake him. He's some racing. I'm hoping, man. Just hoping, man. It's to come up with some crazy ideas just to get the ball rolling. Because I think crazy ideas is exactly what we need. But first... The news. And this just in. People want to know what's going on in the world, but they are tired of slogging through traditional news because it's drier than Oscar Wilde in the Atacama <laughs> Desert drinking shabbily from a sandpaper cup that's actually empty. Avid news cover to Rope Otter has abandoned traditional news, calling it the biggest snore fest of trumped up worditude that made me yawn so hard that a bee flew into my mouth and it was a queen bee and now there's an entire hive in my mouth please send help so as you can see the old ways just aren't cussing it but along comes morning brew a new way to start your day with witty relevant and informative takes on the daily updates in business finance and technology oh, drink coffee. this week i learned that vimeo went public not on really new fair York coffee exchange as part of a new strategy to differentiate itself from youtube you can subscribe for free in just a few seconds and get a relevant, succinct, and punctually written newsletter into your inbox every morning. And why wouldn't you? And I'm being told viewers can click the link in the description to subscribe right now. Mm -hmm. Right now! And now it's back to Chain Bear. My bad. Sport. Sorry, boss. Thank you to our sponsor there. Right, Monaco then. First, the good. It's unique in that it's a genuinely brilliant track in terms of daring do, the actual landscape, and the very limits of risk, challenge, and opportunity it provides. This is boring. It's a beautiful setting carved out of the Mediterranean coast with gorgeous buildings and a scary ribbon of track with real elevation change and barely a 90 degree turn in sight that dares you to kiss every barrier on the way round. Hmm. And as such, qualifying is probably the best Saturday of the year. Which is why qualifying was so fun. This past weekend, uh, very very enjoyed it. I didn't watch it, watch the highlights, but yeah, it was it was good. I liked it. Very very. Good. Monaco is a weekend for qualifying. Go as fast as you can without crashing and ruining your whole weekend in a car that isn't really designed to do it because no other track is like this one. It is rather brilliant, but as Formula One itself keeps on saying, everything is about the Sunday. Yeah. That's the main event. That's what we're building towards. They emphasize this over and over again when discussing sprint qualifying and that any sprint races cannot be allowed to overshadow the main race. So with that in mind, we can't just say, enjoy Monaco for the Saturday, the Sunday isn't important. That's not what F1 is supposed to be about. Yeah. So how do we make Sunday fun? Talk By to breaking us. the mold. Mm. Hard. Crazy idea one. Super qualifying Sunday. 
Okay, so here's what you do. Forget the normal race. Racing is a procession no one can overtake, so just bin that as an idea. Monaco Sundays will be something new. On Saturday, we're going to do one-shot qualifying. Monaco is the best place for that, so we can watch every single car tackle every single spine-tingling corner in their one and only attempt to secure a fast time. Okay. We just send out cars one by one, that's it, one shot, that's all you get, like we used to do for a few years at the beginning of the century. Okay. But then comes Super Qualifying Sunday, in which every car gets one hour to set the fastest lap they can manage. Except it's staggered in two minute increments. With the assumption that the track will improve across the course of the session, the first car to go out will be the slowest car from Saturday. That car can head out onto the track as soon as the session begins. They can set a lap time whenever they want, but once 60 minutes are up, their session is over. The second slowest car will go second, and they are released from two minutes on the clock, and they can go until 62 minutes on the clock. Mm. The third car starts from four minutes and goes to 64 minutes, and so on until the fastest car on Sunday leaves at the 38 minute mark until the one hour 38 minute mark. So everyone gets an hour, but each person gets a slightly different hour, with slight advantage being given the better you did on Saturday. Mm. Lots of cars on track, but it's all about fastest laps, not overtaking, which is next to impossible. Ways to improve this further, you could have to score your best aggregate time from three laps from each 20 minute subsection of your... I like the one shot qualifying because it's... Listen, you got one shot to get it done. But at the same time, because listen, if you like, if you have like a Red Bull, right? Against a, uh, a Alpine, so if it's stop against like, that's my whole car. Who knows? That's why Ocon may just have the fastest car that day. And that may be like the winner. Which I, I would like that stuff like a super qualifying. I mean it's 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 still a pretty cool, unique type of thing. But to have like a one shot thing, like let's get got one shot to get it done. And and just get the winner off of that. If they were gonna do that, if they were gonna like just not race, but I think just the spectacle of racing, everybody wants to see like a race in general. Like, no matter how boring, how easy, you know, dual it is. It's still a race. You never know anything could happen. So, but if they, if in some, if, if some world, if they were going to do that, I would like to one shot. You're allotted hour. So you can't just sit in the garage. You've got to be out there regularly trying to get three hot laps in, in three windows. This might be a little harder to follow, but with the staggered runs, drivers will be locking in their laps for each section one by one. And with the right graphics, we can see just what laps are needed to come out on top. It's a bit bonkers, but it'll be exciting and frustrating bonkers. and weird. And it'll be a test of Monaco prowess. Crazy idea two, the Joker lap. The Joker. Okay, so in World Rallycross, they run a format of short races, about five laps around a short course, with the rule that one of those laps, called the Joker lap, must take an alternate allocated route around part of the circuit, which is a little bit longer, slower, or trickier to navigate. You can take this Joker lap on many of your laps as long as you do it once, opening up strategy opportunities to essentially run an undercut or overcut oh. on your rivals. So what if we added a joker section to the Monaco track? Maybe here by using the roundabout just before the entrance to the tunnel. And instead of having to do the joker once, maybe they have to do it once every six laps. Oh. Or maybe they have to do it ten times over the whole race, whenever they wish, to add deeper strategic element to the whole thing. I like that. If you're stuck behind a rival that you're faster than, maybe you take the joker route to give yourself a bit of space. Catch back up to them, take the Joker again to give yourself space, then recatch them, and that way you're still right behind them, but know you've got two Jokers on them. I like that. And of course, in doing this, you run the risk a rival might pit while you've Jokered yourself out of range. So there is risk and reward at play. The idea with bringing the Joker into play is to allow drivers to push and make a difference against their rivals in ways that they currently can't because they're stuck in an endless queue. What this does is essentially give them more pit stop like opportunities to set hot sectors and make up time to the cars they're up against. So this was the seed of an idea, but we can do better. Crazy idea three. I like the Joker lap. I, I didn't know that was some like WRC type of thing, but uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty neat. You guys let me know you guys thoughts about the Joker lap. That's but some of you guys probably already do you know about that, but I like it. I like I like the Joker lap. That's that's the Joker. The Mega Joker. Ooh. Okay, so instead of some dinky little alternative route, what if we give them a real alternate route to follow? So as the cars go up the hill from San Devot, the normal route would take them into the fast left-hander through Massenet. Or they could take the Mega Joker into a tighter left-hander up Avenue Princess Alice, making their way to Boulevard Princess Charlotte before wiggling their way to rejoin the main route into Mirabeau. 
Maybe they could call it the Two Princesses route. <laughs> Obviously, you'd need to work in some <laughs> lane divisions to make the separation and rejoining safe yeah. with pit lanes and other safety features, but let's imagine it for a second. Okay, talk to Let's me. say you have to do this alternate route 10 times a race. It's got new characteristics, a long, fast section down Princess Charlotte, perhaps an overtaking spot or two. It's a way longer route than the main track past the casino, so taking it will obviously lose you time, same as taking a pit stop does. But just as with taking a pit stop, everyone has to do it, so it's also an opportunity to make up time. Can you use it to your advantage to come out on top, or will you be cruelly undercut? And if you are undercut through the Mega Joker early on, you still have the opportunity to settle the score later on. What the Mega Joker does is let Monaco do its Monaco thing. It'll still be hard to overtake on track. It's still going fast between the barriers. It's still a hair-raising challenge. But now we translate that qualifying adrenaline to racing conditions. Mm. If you can't push to overtake the car in front, you now have an opportunity to take one of your jokers and push in an equally challenging part of the track. I don't know. I think it might be neat. I like it. Or crazy idea four. Maybe we just fix the cars. <laughs> F1 cars don't actually have a maximum length, but they tend to run as long as 5.8 meters and max out at two meters wide, not counting the wheels. And we already know they have very disruptive aero. But that's less of an issue in Monaco. Formula 2 had a tricky but ultimately scrappy and entertaining three races on the very same circuit, and those three cars races. were only 5.2 meters long with skinnier wheels. Formula E finally raced on basically the same Monaco layout as Formula 1 just two weeks earlier in 2021, and those cars are less than 5.2 meters long, less than 1.8 meters wide, with a wheelbase 600 millimeters shorter than Mercedes. They're talky as hell and a right handful to drive. And what happened? Well, they're going to go side by side into the back! And Evans comes down in front and good to take advantage and gets fast to the outside for the lead of the race again and fries it through. The Mirabeau, the Jaguar on the inside. The Tachita on the outside, now the other way around. We're actually teasing over taking Formula E. And Marco. He's going for it now! Oh, what a move! Evans up through Beauregard! You have defenders to use. Oh, side by side, and here comes the Costa, they make contact! And real end to the Ypres, and Frites gets second, does he? Yes! Frites on the line! It was amazing. The thing is, We've got a lot of cool tracks on the F1 calendar that a lot of people hate, and some of them we dread going to, not because they're rubbish tracks, but because Formula 1 is incompatible with those tracks. The 2017 rule change to make the cars bigger and faster was the stupidest change I'd seen in decades. It hammered racing. But F1 doesn't have to be incompatible with its own tracks. And we are making a step forward with next year's regs, but I believe we can make these cars smaller and punchier without sacrificing speed or safety. It is completely feasible. And then maybe we can go to Barcelona and Sochi and Abu Dhabi and maybe even Monaco and have a whale of a time like some of the other cars do. That would be fun. Although I still want to do the Mega Joker thing, please. Yeah, I like the Mega Joker one. The Mega Joker is really, really good. I'm a big fan. Shout out to Chamber. That was very, very, very good. Um, I mean... About the car width, I don't really have an issue how big the cars are. It, it's just the way it is regarding the cars. Uh, I I will say the way Formula E, I guess, has their uh, Monaco race set up. I, I like that. I like the way that they have it. Um, but like I said, just, you know, if F1 can have a similar concept like they have with Formula E, which I'm, not, I'm surprised that they don't or they never, I guess. <laughs> Did it? Cause I mean, aren't they all like under one formula? Yeah. But <laughs> anyway, you guys don't know you guys thoughts about this, man. Um, very, very cool. Love to hear it. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Don't forget to like the, like the video, sub as well as always. Take care. Stay amazing. Continue to be awesome. Love you guys and girls. Peace.